praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now? Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord, to be in your house tonight, God. We give you praise. We want to welcome everyone that is that is here tonight. So glad that you came out on a Wednesday night. Looking forward to what God's going to do with Elder Mills teaching here shortly. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. If you have a need and you want, to, want us to pray for you, you can make your way down here to the front and we'll, we'll pray for you. But let's pray. God, we love you, Lord. And once again, we thank you, God, that we could be in your house. God, we want you to have your way in this place, Lord. You know every need in the house tonight, God. Those that are, that are not here tonight, God, keep your hand on them, Lord. Keep them safe and bring them back, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Praise the Lord. You could be seated at this time. going to be a little different tonight. Well, uh, for reasons out of our control, we won't, won't be having any singing, but... Uh, but that's all right. God's still in the house. Praise the Lord. But we do want to give uh, somebody an opportunity. If you, if you have a testimony, we want you, to, want you to share your testimony with us. If you want to tell us what God has done for you here recently. Hey, Sally, go ahead. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a healing God. Is there anybody else that wants to? Sister Mary? All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. I I, I want to say that I'm thankful that the Lord has touched my. That's my mother there, and glad to have her in uh in the house of the Lord. Uh, missed a whole lot, but we're glad she's here. Anybody else that, that has a testimony? Go ahead, Noah. Thank the Lord. That's God, that's God saying if, if we'll do our part, he'll do his part. And that's for everybody. If we'll do our part, he will do his. Praise the Lord. Anybody else want to testify? All right. Yes, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. This is one of those. This, you know, sometimes you have testimony service, and you kind of you're gonna crunch for time because you got a lot of other stuff to do. But tonight we actually have time for everybody to testify if you want to. So, uh, is anybody else before we move on that wants to uh, that wants to testify? Going once. All right. Well, this time we want to receive our tithes and offerings. Uh, Noah, if you come and hold the bag for me, uh, Noah, if you don't mind. Everybody's in children's church. We we do want to pray that they have a move of God next door also. But let's ask the Lord to bless it tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for the giving, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to take it, Lord, and, and, and bless it and use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have some something to give, you can bring it. All right. Thank you for your giving. At this time, we're going to uh, do our announcements. Is it, is it up? All right, if you want to turn your attention to the announcement. Hello, ATF Church family. Let's take a look at the announcements for the remainder of this week. Our next jail ministry service at East Feliciana Detention Center will be this Thursday night with Elder Steve Mills and Brother Jackson Mills going to minister the word. Also, our next Freedom Reigns Recovery class for West Feliciana Detention Center will be this Thursday night with Brother Garrett Wilson and Brother Noah Sagely teaching. The ATF kids will be visiting the Pumpkin Patch this Saturday. The cost is $5 per child. Please let Sister Tara Martin know as soon as possible if you plan on attending. The next Ministers in Training class will be this Sunday. 
it will be held in the ATF Family Life Center at 11.30 a.m. We have some other fun and exciting events that are coming up this month. Our annual ATF Fall Fest will be on October 26th at 4 p.m. It will be held in the ATF Family Life Center. All are welcome and invited. As a final announcement, if you want to be a part of the ATF's inspiration on October 27th, please be sure to complete the sign-up form. If you have any questions about signing up, you can reach out to Sister Haley. We will have a meal following this inspiration. The nursery and bridge classes are now dismissed. Thank you for being part of our ATF church family, and we hope you have a great week. Actually, the uh, bridge class will be, be staying in, uh, but we will dismiss the nursery class at this time. And I do want to add to the to the Singspiration on the 27th, we're only having one service at 3 p.m. So uh, just one service at 3 p.m. on the 27th. All right, this time if you would stand when we want Elder Mills to come and, and do whatever the Lord has laid on his heart at this time. All right. How many ready to have church? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the uh, crowd looks good tonight. Y'all want me to be just the opposite, don't you? want me to recognize who ain't here and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, they ain't here, so we can. We want them to have a good time doing what they're doing. We're going to have a good time right here. Is that all right? How many knows that God deserves something? I don't care if there's two here, three here, uh, if there's two or three people gathering in. Uh, I I started home mission work several years ago, and this crowd would have looked good. And we kicked off uh, five people, and uh, we went that way for quite a while, and until uh, we finally got in the twenties, and you know, just inched our way on up in the sixties and stuff like that. It uh, this crowd looks good tonight, and um, I, I've uh, I've ministered in all kind of scenarios. Um, I preached on street corners. And uh, watched them have wrecks while he was watching us, and uh, running into each other at the stop signs and everything else. And uh, I have preached one to one, uh, just uh, whatever. I remember one time I told the church uh, we had been kicked off for a little while. And I was so zealous and stuff, you know. And I said, you know, uh, I said I'm going to preach to this church if we don't have but five people. But well, by that time we didn't got up in the twenties. And, um, well, it came a big old storm the next week, and power went down and all kinds. We had five people that ne very next service. But you know what? I, have, I made up my mind a long time ago. When I study for a service, I, if it's a small crowd, if it's five, or if it's a hundred, I'm going to put the same amount of time into it because it's a, it's a message. And if you send a letter out and you send it to people, you know that one letter is just as important as the ten letters. How many knows that? And so why don't you give the Lord another praise offering? He deserves all the praise we can give him. Hallelujah. He's been so good. And I'm going to say this. I appreciate Brother Sagely and uh, the great uh, part he plays in, uh, around here, around this church, him and his good wife. Uh, the great work that they do and everything. And, um, you know, I, I came down here to help, to assist. Uh, I didn't come down here to pastor. Uh, we had five, six churches offered to us right after we got down here. I said, well, uh, you know, we ain't going that route right now. <laughs> and uh, one of them was over across the river down toward Lafayette and on down that area. And all I could think about, I said, Lord, I ain't crossing that bridge unless you make me. I meant moving across that bridge. <laughs> and all I could think about every time I came over here to see the family, I got to cross that bridge. And uh, But, you know, uh, you say, well, what if God told you? Well, if he told me to, I would. I started the church, and he told me to. And uh, I do a lot of things if he tells me to. But if he don't tell me to, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to get in trouble, don't you? Why don't we turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians while you're standing and uh, I will have you to stand on the first uh, uh, few, uh, few scriptures here. And uh, you say, well, why don't you let us sit down? Because I don't want you to forget that this stuff's important. 
And I'd rather you just stand just at least on the first few scriptures. And uh, just to honor, not to honor me, I always said, but in honor of the Word of God. Uh, I look at things different, maybe some folks. I think Wednesday night just as important as Sunday and Sunday night. I, I don't take it as a night off. I, I don't dress any different because I'm still coming to the house of God. And I, I want to treat it that way. Uh, a few years ago in the offices, they uh, I worked in an office for several years, around 20 years for Surly Foods. And they got to where uh, they were having what they call dress down. And I watched those folks, when they began to dress down, then they changed on how they respected the office. But you let them same folks come in, and they'd have some nice khaki, or guys have some khaki pants and a nice shirt on, and uh, the ladies come in with nicer clothes. They, they just felt different about their jobs. And, and you let me get in my paint, uh, my nice paint clothes, the ones I go do estimates in, I feel different than I do in those paint clothes. I promise you I do. And that's the same way I feel about the house of God. I love this word. Let's go Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. That means to bring us into maturity and to growth, it don't mean we're never going to make a mistake, anything like that, but it means to bring us to the grown-up state. And uh, it's for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying means to build up. Uh, it said, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, and that's still a grown-up man, Unto the measure, uh, it's part I want you to get right here. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and by the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth. Everybody say truth. In love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body is fitly uh, joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the affectional, everybody say, working of the measure of every part, make of increase of the body unto the edifying or building up of of itself in love. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to, that 16th verse, I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It said, from the whole body joined together, held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Let's just all pray together. I want to give you a thought tonight. The measure of us all. The measure of of us all. Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we love you, we adore you, and God, we ask you, God, for your help tonight as we begin to break the bread of life. We love the word, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you can be seated. We do miss uh, Pastor Mills and his good wife and uh, several of them that went on the church trip. And uh, we want them to have a good time. We have a few others this out tonight, and we miss them also. But we are here, and we're going to have good church tonight, talking about the Word of God. First Peter 2 and 3 says this, And so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whose coming is a lively stone. It talks about the Lord and said that he came as a lively stone, he was disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. In other words, it's saying he was a stone that was disallowed of men, and he was threw to the side. He was pushed to the side and disallowed of men, but to us, he is precious. And to us, he means something. He be, he's very important to us. Now, if you're in the church today, the Lord ought to be very important to you. How many knows that? This church ought to be very important to you. 
Hallelujah. I thought tonight when we come to the house of God, we are to come with the ideal is I'm not coming to see what the church can do for me. I'm coming to see what I can do for him. I come to give him something. I come to lift up my hands to him. Hallelujah. I owe him. He don't owe me. Hallelujah. But I believe a lot of time we come to the attitude, I come to see what I can get. And I understand what you're saying. There's times I walk in here and I, I want to see what I can get, Brother Saisley. But there ought to be times that every time we walk through that door, nobody has to encourage us to pray. We want to pray. Nobody has to encourage us to lift our hands. We want to lift our hands. Why? Because he's done so much for us. We can't do enough for him. How many believe that? Hallelujah. Now, it talks about him and said, and then it turns around and said, he came as a lively stone. And First Peter 2 and 5, and ye also as lively stones. Everybody say, I got I to come alive. I got to come alive because I'm a lively stone. Hallelujah. And he said, we are built upon a spiritual house. And then when he starts talking about the church, it gives you an image of a house that's being built. And it, and it talks about this jointly, that we're, it's not just, uh, you know, uh, one member, but it's several different members. You know, in a house, you got two befores, and you got brick, and you got sheetrock, and you got all these things, and you got the foundation. And, you know, I wouldn't want to try to build a house and build the wall first and then try to build the foundation. We got to put things in the order that it goes in. You got to start out with a good foundation. If you don't do that, then the rest of it is a null and void. Uh, uh, you know, I'd hate to hang sheetrock before I put up the studs. <laughs> uh, I don't think it worked very well to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, these carpenters, Brother Garrett back there shaking his head, I don't think that would work. And uh, uh, so uh, we understand that we are being called, he said, lively stone, built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. I say a chief cornerstone. Now, I'm bringing this out for a reason here. Everybody say we're talking about the measure of us all. The measure of us all. And uh, he said that he is the chief cornerstone. He's talking about the Lord. And said, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. He's elect. He's precious. He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed are cast to the side. The same is made the head of the corner. In other words, he is part of our building. Some people don't want him in the building, but we've made him part of our building. What is the church without the Lord? Come on. What is the church without the Lord? Now, uh, I want to go into this, but you are chosen uh, or, or let me go back to the eighth verse. But a stone of stumbling, they stumbled over him, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they are appointed. Now, now let, let me tell you something. We need to get back in the hour where we preach the word of God and people quit worrying about our feelings so much. That just somebody just point blank point to us and say, Thus saith the word, if it offends you, it just offends you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I had a, I, I was, uh, well, I ain't going to get into that tonight. I, I, I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> and, uh, but ye are chosen generate royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should shoot forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness and to his marvelous lights, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have, uh, had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Now, I want you to notice something in the Bible. Jesus is called the chief cornerstone. Now, that don't mean he's the head of an Indian tribe. His chief cornerstone means 
uh, if you know anything about building, which I know some about it, the cornerstone in construction was the main stone that was laid. And from this cornerstone, I, I, I don't know if they use cornerstones for this reason anymore, but they did it one time, and they would lay the first stone, and off the cornerstone, they'd get all their measurements. And the, the rest of the building got its measurements, how to assemble the rest of the building came from the cornerstone, or the measurements from the cornerstone. And so the cornerstone is the first stone laid. It is the reference point for all other stones. Now, remember what he said now. Ye also are what? Lively stones. But in order to be the right shape, the right size, to operate in order that God wants you to operate, you got to get your measurements off the cornerstone. He is the chief stone or the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. He has not left you without instruction. You ain't going to ride just through here and not know what you need to do. and what uh, You can't just live any old way and, and just go to church and live just any kind of life. You got to find out what kind of measurements and what you got to mark up to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all don't get nervous on me. Uh, and, and he, so, he said, you've got to have a reference point. Uh, and it's a, pre prevent pre a part of the building process. And without it, the building might be unstable. How I many of if he's left out of this, then we're unstable. And that's the reason the nation of Israel become an unstable place, because they cast out the cornerstone. Hallelujah. So the cornerstone is the setting stone. It is the most important stone in the determining the entire structure. So Jesus is called the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone in 1 Peter 2 and 4, Isaiah 28 and 16, and also in 4, Acts 4 and 11. Jesus is the foundation of our faith, and those who trust in him will never be put to shame. The cornerstone is the basics for all other measurements for the alignment of the building and everything else, the weight of it, stands upon him, and without him, then the foundation collapses. The foundation collapses. Jesus. And so if we look at him, we must see him as a measuring guide. He is the plumb line for the whole church. He is the plumb line. There, come out with a little book a few years ago in his steps. Can you know walk? You know, they, some people made a choice in the, in the little book. You can still get it. Uh, for a certain period of time, uh, we're not going to do anything that we think the Lord wouldn't do, and we're going to walk in his step. Well, we're supposed to do that every day. <laughs> but sometime, uh, you know, I find myself getting away from the measuring point, don't you? You have to go back and revisit and, and, and get back on track again and get to the place that I need to be in my prayer and uh, you know I got so many things going on in life and uh, yeah, you know I find myself uh, feeding the flesh more than I will feeding the spiritual man you say how do you feed the spiritual man you give him spiritual food you read the word of God and you pray and you seek the face of God and all that and uh, it's a whole lot easier to sit down and read a book listen to a ball game and all those things. And all, the flesh likes a lot of these things. You know that. I didn't say it was wrong. I'm just saying is you can feed your outer man more than you feed your inner man and get your whole life out of balance. Get your walk with God. Your relationship gets out of balance. And so he is the measure of us all. He is the one who we look to for all of our foundational points and Everything else relies upon him. He defines our reality. The cross of Jesus is the reference points for what is good and what is right. Hallelujah. Uh, Isaiah 28 and 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth on him shall not make haste. He that believeth on him. And uh, if you go down to uh, 
Acts 4 and 11, this is the stone that was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. I'm telling you, you can't leave him out of this because Acts 4 and 12, see, said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name among, under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. No other baptism will work except baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't have to sit around and try to figure, well, I don't know. I don't want to offend this person. You know, a guy on the job one time, he asked me, uh, he was going to a denominal church, a Trinitarian church, and he, he said, uh, and, and we was good friends. His name was Roger, and Roger, uh, we've been, I've been, you know, he, he wasn't going to stay around me long, and we worked together, and I talked to him about Jesus' name, baptism, and um, and all these things about the church, oneness of God. And he stopped me one day and he said, uh, Steve, he called me Steve because he's on first name basis. He said, do you think I'll go to hell if I'm not baptized in Jesus' name? <laughs> and you said, well, what'd you tell him? I said, well, you know what? It don't matter what I think. I said, it matters what this says. I said, this is what's going to judge you on judgment day. I said, Roger, what's that book say? I said, don't you put me in a position where only God's going to set to judge your life. But I'm going to tell you, this book is going to be open on judgment day. And if you know you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, you better get baptized in Jesus' name because it will not work any other way. We got to go back to the measuring line, the chief cornerstone of the building. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, unless you believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins. Hallelujah. Praise God. It ain't no guesswork about this. I don't have to, I don't question baptism in Jesus. I don't question apostolic doctrine. We're living in an age where people question so many things that they used to didn't question. Hallelujah. What gave you a right to question something that's already set in stone? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, but I ain't, uh, had a guy tell me one time, I taught him a Bible study. He was the, went to another nominal church, and I got through teaching him. He was by himself at the time. His wife was already coming to the church. And he said, uh, Preacher, he said, uh, I see it. Can you go over that again? And I said, Yes, sir. And I read through it again. Acts 10, Acts 8, Acts 19, Acts 2. I read all. He said, Man, I see it. But if I accept that, then my old mom and dad, what about them? I said, hey, let me tell you something. We ain't here talking to old mom and dad. We're talking to you. And you know what's in this book. I said, we'll leave them for judgment day and let God decide about them. You said, why didn't you just tell them? Because I don't send nobody to hell. I don't place nobody in hell. I don't have funerals and, and say, hey, he went to hell. Y'all know that? I knew a preacher did that. I thought, he had no wisdom at all. Hallelujah. Let God take care of what's God's and take you take care of what belongs to you. Now, I want you to notice something going back to the first scriptures, Ephesians 2 and 20. We're built upon the foundation of the apostles. And it said the apostles and the prophets. Now, we're built upon uh, the teachings of, of the New Testament apostles and also Old Testament teachings of the prophets. Now, they prophesied about the cornerstone. We don't keep the law. He, he come to fulfill the law. But there's many things that if you do not understand about Old Testament, you're not going to understand New Testament. If you don't understand the topology in the Ark of the Covenant, if you don't understand uh, the burning bush, that that was God and manifested in a, man a visible manifestation. It was typology. It's theophany, they call it. Uh, if you don't understand 
what the ark represented, that it was an escape uh, uh, when man was so sinful that God provided a way of salvation and Noah found grace in the eyes of God. If you don't understand that the priest was told, he said about the brazen water lever, he said, if you don't wash, you'll die. Wash that you die not, and it's a type of baptism. Uh, so we, we need what came from the apostles and also the prophets and he said, Jesus Christ himself being a chief cornerstone. So the teachings of the apostles, uh, I was sitting in a, uh, uh, on a job one day, and I, was, I had this guy at the table, and I was explaining to him Jesus' name, baptism, and a Baptist deacon came by, and he hollered. He stopped, and uh, he didn't really like me too much anyway, and he, he reached across there, and he said, you're going to go to hell for telling people they got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And I said, oh, really? You mean I'm going to go to hell for telling somebody for something that's in black and white? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. And I just kept on telling that guy about the truth. Now, I'm not a smart aleck, but I believe the word stands for itself. And I believe we're, our foundation, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> we're not going to get our foundation off Trinity Broadcasting. You're not going to get it. I'm sorry, you're not going to get it down to the nominal church. You're going to get it from apostolic doctrine. A preacher open up this book and just preach it word for word, and you ought to love it with all you got when a man will tell you the truth and won't back down on it. The Bible says this now, the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being what? The chief cornerstone. So he is the main object of this he is uh, uh, you know Jesus did not make a mistake I've always gave this example you know Jesus said I'll go away I'll come again and he came here for a period of time and he got 12 guys and he picked them out and later on Judas was replaced but he taught them uh, this truth and he it was, it's kind of like a CEO coming from Chicago and he comes down picks out 12 guys and he said I'm going to build a plant and I'm going to tell you how I want it built, and I'm going to tell you all the measurements and all that. And he goes back to Chicago, and he said, I'll be back after a period of time. You just make sure you build it like I'm telling you to build it. And their obligation is to build it like the CEO or the owner tells them to. And the apostles did not make a mistake. They done it exactly like the Lord told them to set up the church. So we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And if anybody comes preaching any other doctrine than that, the Bible said, let them in Galatians be accursed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In whom all the building fitly framed together. Here's a typology again, Old Testament typology of the temple. Now, <laughs> if... Uh, if God told Noah and Noah build an ark and God said you use gopher wood and he goes for pine, <laughs> I'm just twisting my words there a little bit. But if he goes down to Home Depot and they had a Home Depot at that time and he buys a bunch of pine and instead of using gopher wood, it's not going to sell. It's not going to work. And God said you pitch it within, you pitch it without, and you do it like I say do it. And he said, well, we'll do it without, but we ain't going to do it within. And we'll do it within, we're not going to do it without. And God said, you put one door in there. And Noah said, no, I'm going to put two doors in there. That ain't the way you do it. It's not a guessing game. There is a measurement that we all go back to in the corner of the building. We don't get to decide how we set up the church. It's already set there in stone. In whom all the building fitly framed together. Everybody say, I'm part of the building. Groweth. Everybody say, groweth. Unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are builded together. Everybody say, we're builded together. For a habitation of God through the Spirit. Now, the temple was a special place. It was a place where the Spirit of God could dwell. The holies of holy, the ark of the covenant. And God said in the New Testament, he's gathered people together, and we all make up the temple fitly framed together. 
and we've all got a job to do. Uh, we're all important. We're not all two befores. We're not all roofing material, but we do have a job to do. And if you think you're in the church today without a job to do, then you're probably not in the church because everybody has, if you're part of a building, you've got a reason for being there. I don't see my insulation, but I know it's doing something up there. I see it if I go up in the attic. But, but it, you know, it don't get a lot of glory and it don't get a lot of uh, attention and people don't walk in the house and say, oh, you sure have got pretty insulation. Now, they may brag on the trim and brag on the doors and the cabinets and things like that, but they don't say, boy, I sure do like that wiring you got. But how many knows that if the wiring ain't working, you sure, they come in and say, boy, it sure is hot in here. It sure is cold in here in the wintertime. And just because you're not always out front where somebody can see you don't mean you ain't playing a part in the church. Work where God connects you with and where he puts you and realize whatever you do is very important. Hallelujah. But Garrett, somebody got to do what you're doing at that jail. And that, you know, we'll be heading out there one of them tomorrow night. and uh, Man, I'm glad... They made that announcement, that AA, whatever that guy is, because I about forgot. And uh, so I'm glad that we've got some of this new technology to remind us, even though I do have it on my phone. Uh, <laughs> takes more than that sometimes to remind me. Often used in, uh, now it symbolizes the fundamental system of the church that we are built up. On the Lord is our foundation. He, we, everything, Brother Smith, goes back to him. And if you leave the cornerstone, if you don't get your measurements from him, the Bible said, let the same mind be in you, which was in who? Christ Jesus. Let the same mind be in you. The Bible said he humbled himself. He lowered himself. It, it talks about though he was rich, he become poor for our sake. Hallelujah. And he done those things. And now, uh, Ephesians 3 and 4 says, Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now, I'm going to go back to our beginning scripture, and I'm, I'm going to wind this thing down. We're going downhill now. Ain't y'all glad? We had a preacher who used to preach camp meetings in our area, Brother Eddie Jones, and uh, he'd get... He'd say, now, when I blow my nose, I'm halfway. Problem is, tonight, I forgot to bring a handkerchief. <laughs> so y'all don't know where I'm at. Hallelujah. And uh, he, sure enough, he'd blow his nose, and he said, well, it's part two coming up. Visions 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists. Somebody said, I don't need an evangelist. I got a pastor. You still need an evangelist. We still need evangelists. How many knows it feels good? Uh, yeah, I don't care how long you've been pastoring at a church. Uh, uh, it don't hurt to hear somebody else sometime to back that good man up. And they preach the same mess. You say, well, I, I don't think evangelists, I think there's only certain things he ought to preach. Well, Really? How you know he's getting backed up then? Hallelujah. We restrict. And I understand there's got to be wisdom in some things and some areas. But what I'm talking about is sometimes we ought to allow the evangelist to walk up and down us a little bit and say preach to us and not worry about our feelings so much. Hallelujah. Evangelists and pastors, and a pastor is comes from the same word as shepherd comes from. A pastor is actually, it's good that they use the word pastor. It's spelt different than the word pastor where sheep go in, but it, um, it, it's great that they use this word to talk about the shepherd. Your pastor is 
the one who he's gets he's got a direct line to the instructions for the church. You got a lot of responsibility. So give him that much credit. He has a lot of response. He has things on him that I don't have on me, and this man don't have on him. So you remember that uh, when you uh, you think, well, I was at that hospital and. There was other people at the hospital too, and you didn't show up. But most of the time, this preacher's going to show up. I promise you. I've laid at the hospital all night long. I'm talking about the pastor. But I, I, I remember as a pastor, uh, I remember a tornado come through, brother, come through, hit our area, killed 20 something people. Uh, it threw horses, I mean, killed horses, left them laying in ditches. It blew uh, animals up in trees. I mean, it just literally destroyed. Blew houses literally up. I mean, it just just like that, just blew them up. All was left was slabs, and there wasn't even no brush uh, two before laying around. It just cleared it off, and just blew it everywhere. And I remember going to to the hospital. We had a family in our church. Uh, they were uh, uh, threw out of their house. They got into the closet. Uh, mom and her, her, there was pretty new people in our church and with her little boy and little girl and they held hands in the closet and they prayed and that storm literally blew them out of the house, blew the house up, destroyed it. All the old one, the little boys had a little bleedy place on his ear and the little girl didn't have nothing wrong with her. But I laid at the hospital with them all night long with them. And I'm not saying that to brag on me, but pastors do things you don't even know they do. So give them, help them out. Don't make it hard. Uh, don't make them run you down to try to figure out where you're at. Let them know. You let the boss that know it work. You tell them where you're at. Why does a preacher got to run you down to find out where you're at? <laughs> Y'all backing me tonight? Huh? Hallelujah. Well, we don't have to tell no man where we're at. Well, you do... You tell them that on the job where you're at, if you don't, you lose your job. You're going to lose your job here, too, if you don't watch it. <laughs> All right. Evangelists, pastors, teachers. No need no teaching. Oh, yes, you do. For the perfecting of the saints. That means to get you where you need to go. For the work of the ministry. That means to serve. For the edifying. That means to build up of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith. You say, well, I, I you know, I, I, I just don't believe it exactly like old brother Garrett believes it back there. Well, just give it time. We all may believe the same thing. But if you just be a little patient, be a little patient. I may not believe everything exactly exactly like you believe it. You may not believe everything exactly like I believe it. I may not have, I may have convictions that you don't have. You may have some, uh, you do not have some, but I'm going to tell you, just because you don't have them don't mean I ain't going to hold on to mine. It's worked for me for years. Worked for me for years. So, And, and I'm not going to run you down if you don't have them. Is that all right? Because we're going to work together. We're going to strive together. My main purpose is to get to heaven. My main purpose is to take somebody with me. I, I was in a business meeting this morning, and you had to fill out this form and said, uh, what's your, your greatest interest? And this is a bunch of bankers and all kind of stuff. I said, church is my greatest interest. They said, well, what, what is your goals for the future? And I put on earth to walk on gold and take somebody with me while I'm doing it. You say, well, they're bankers. Yeah, but they all claim to be Christians. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I'm sure that didn't, surely didn't offend them. Hallelujah. Till we all come to unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, and to a perfect man, or to the measure, everybody say the measure, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The word fullness means to take on all of his, uh, you know, to pattern ourselves and model after him, that our life is filled up with him. It, our time is filled up with him. Uh, that don't mean we don't go to work. That don't mean, but I'm going to tell you, every day of our life ought to be some time in there with him. Oh, 
yes, sir, we got to feed this guy in here. This spiritual guy's got to feed, be fed every day. Oh, yes, sir, don't t- put him on the fast. Put that flesh on the fast, but don't put your spiritual man on the fast. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. How important it is uh, to follow the man of God that's connected to the chief cornerstone and the apostles and all this. He said that you be henceforth no more children. He said you got to grow up. Somewhere in the church, you got to grow up. I mean, <laughs> still amazes me. People have been in church for years, still don't know how to what prayer meetings about before church. What'd you do today? <laughs> yeah, I'm going fishing next week. Yeah, I hear. hey, did you see that? You know. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, God. Uh, just stop and just carry on the conversation, you know, just about a little nothing, and go back to doing it again. And I thank God. Is that all prayer meeting means that it's not your time any longer, but it's part time. We're working part time in prayer, part time in this, part time in that. We need to give God something. Every time we come, and I believe if we got that mind that we come to that full measure of knowledge and love and holiness, hallelujah. Uh, Paul said this in closing, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, Be ye followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. You say, well, how, how do you know who to follow? Make sure they're following Christ. Make sure they're following Christ. You say, well, if they if they don't line up the book, well, should I follow them? No, you should not. You better got to be careful who you follow, and uh, you you got to understand that they got to be connected to that lively stone. And you are a stone. Remember that. But you're not the main one. You're not the main one. He is, and you want to stay connected to him. How many of you appreciate Elder Mills and that teaching tonight? That's, that's good teaching, good solid teaching. Appreciate everyone that come out tonight. If you don't mind, let's give the, those that are in children's church, if you have kids over there, let's give them to 8.30 if you don't mind and let them finish their, what they prepared for all week. And, uh, so, but other than that, you dismiss. We love you and appreciate you.